Lying off the storm-swept northern coast of Scotland, the Orkney Islands is an area of untamed beauty. Every year, this wind-blown prolongation of land is visited by thousands of seals who seem indifferent to nature's furious assault. This is the story of one of those seals. He is easily recognized by an unusual scar on his muzzle. It is in October as winter sets in that female grey seals return to Farre Island to give birth. The first seal to come to shore is Nose No Good's father, who measures some 2 meters 30 and weighs in at 350 kilos. He's quite an impressive fellow. After spending a year at sea, his highly developed sense of direction has guided him back to the beach where he was born. He's come to make sure this beach is free of danger. Knows No Good's father is a dominant or alpha male. He has come to defend his territory, the beach where his harem of females will give birth to their pups. He goes to greet the first of his females to come to shore. The other members of the harem, which includes some 30 individuals, soon follow and invade the beach, annoying the seagulls. The females are smaller with thinner muzzles and white abdomens. They are loyal to the alpha male's protection. By day's end, the entire harem has arrived. For the next month, the male will stay nearby to protect them. In three weeks, he will once again mate with them. And there is no doubt about it, he leads the life of a Pasha. Female grey seals give birth to their pups shortly after their arrival and always at night. Nose no good is born at dawn. The seagulls fight over the placenta and amniotic sac. The young are covered with dense white fur known as lanugo, a souvenir of a time when grey seals were born on ice floes. Male pups are generally born before female pups and most often to the harem's larger females. Still dazed by her birth, a female pup wanders in search of her mother. She meets Nose No Good, her blood brother, whose fur is already a beautiful creamy white. They must wait approximately six hours before suckling. The mother seals take advantage of this brief pause to temporarily leave their pups. Upon their return, they will begin the marathon of three weeks of nursing. 
Once back, the mother grey seals must use their highly developed sense of smell to locate their pups. At birth, Nose No Good could visually be mistaken for any of the other baby seals. Which one of the pups is nose no good? Of course, he's the last pup his mother smells. Suddenly, a troublemaker interrupts their greeting. A young female is the last to come back up. She immediately tries to claim the handsome young nose no good as her own. But the pup's real mother has something to say about this. Peace has been restored, and Nose No Good can finally begin suckling the two litres of milk he requires each day to thrive. His mother won't eat for the next three weeks, devoting all her time to this little monster. By the end of the three weeks, she will have lost more than 60 kilos. In the meantime, Nose No Good will have gone from his birth weight of 12 kilos to a hefty 50 kilo youngster. Between feedings, Nose No Good's mother finds the time to enjoy a relaxing swim. Much to the distress of her young pup. Like his half-brothers and sisters, Nose No Good must stay on land while he is still dependent on his mother's milk. His white baby fur offers no protection from the Atlantic's icy cold waters. For him, the sea is still a hostile, alien environment. No doubt about it, Nose No Good hates the water as much as a cat. By the middle of the stormy season, activity in the Grey Seal nursery is at its peak. Strong animal odours mix with those of Varric. The forces of nature have swept the rack from the shore rocks. However, it provides a meal for the Scottish sheep. And a makeshift umbrella for Nose No Good. It's hopeless. He has to give in. A grey seal has to love water. After nursing for three weeks, the young seal will progressively lose his white fur. He has built up a thick layer of fat which protects him from the cold. 
He will soon have his adult coat, which is better adapted for aquatic life. A month has gone by. The adult females have finished nursing their young and have returned to the sea, abandoning their pups on the beach. Living off their fat reserves, the pups may spend several weeks playing on the beach without eating. These playful tussles are in reality a prelude to combats which will later determine the hierarchy of the seal colony and which will perhaps one day dethrone the alpha male. In order to become larger and heavier than the massive leader, the young seals first must go to sea and eat. Out at sea, knows no good must learn to swim and hunt on his own. Food is rare in winter months. Little by little, the seal's fat reserves will melt away. His bulky physique will be transformed into a sleeker, more hydrodynamic form, one which is perfectly adapted to underwater swimming. Farray Island is deserted in the spring. The light of the midnight sun washes over the seabird colonies on the cliffs. They've come here to nest and raise their young, safe from marauders. At the base of the cliffs, the curious young seals are attracted by the birds' noisy cries. But there's nothing to eat here. To incubate their eggs, male and female puffins, seagulls and guillemots take turns. The seals will wait at the mouths of the rivers for their first meal, salmon. The fish are exhausted from their gruelling swim upstream to spawn. Those who survived will return to the sea to rest and recover for another year. Nose no good and other immature seals lie in ambush for the arrival of this easy prey. They hunt by sight in the shallow waters. In the springtime, octopi make their way to the shallows to mate, unless nose no good catches up with them first. The seal has an extremely unique way of hunting. He remains motionless on the sea floor and waits for his prey to arrive.
faced with danger, the octopus quickly swims away, squirting ink behind him in an attempt to hide himself. But this time, it's in vain. Knows no good will journey far out to sea, swimming and hunting on his own for several years. The seal has found a clever way to rest which is known as bottling. By keeping his lungs filled with air, his body floats at the surface where he can sleep, rocked by the waves. As he grows, Knows No Good will perfect his hunting techniques and begin diving in ever deeper waters. He is now six years old. He can dive for half an hour at a time and go as deep as 225 meters in a darkened realm where the pressure is tremendous. The seal's pulse slows down. His metabolism adapts to send oxygen primarily to the vital organs. The heart, brain and eyes. He has come to hunt safe, which come to feed on the sandworms. In the water's obscurity, he locates his prey with vibrissa, long white whiskers on his muzzle and eyebrows. These extremely sensitive whiskers are able to detect a wave emitted by the saith. It's a real feast. Upon reaching adulthood, Knows No Good will be able to hunt much larger prey, such as conger eel. The eel may reach a length of two and a half meters. Its skin is slippery due to a thick layer of mucus which covers its body. There's only one way to catch it, by breaking its neck. In order to spot camouflage prey, Nose No Good picks up even the slightest vibrations. A crab is of little interest. A conger eel squeezes into its hole. As an opportunistic predator, Knows No Good eats countless varieties of fish, even a rockling which is hiding under the seaweed. But years of gorging on delicious fish has left the seal somewhat contemptuous of this prey. Knows No Good is now seven years old and has reached his adult size. There are now other things which are of greater interest to him. With his thick layer of blubber, Knows No Good returns to the island where he was born to form a harem. The number of calories needed to keep warm outside the sea is 20 times less than in the cold water. Knows No Good is too hot.
On these thermal images, the white areas indicate heat and show just how seals are able to regulate their body temperature. They dilate the blood vessels of their extremely vascular muzzles and flippers. In this way, their blood is cooled. Still too hot? They can also dilate the veins under their heavy layer of fat and raise their flippers to catch a cool breeze. As his father did before him, Nose No Good has formed a small harem on the island where he was born. But he's not yet large enough to be a dominant male. The alpha male arrives. The island isn't big enough for the two of them. The leader will fight to defend his territory and breed with the most females. What can be done against a giant who has years of battle experience behind him? There is no solution but to leave. Farewell, the friendly jousts of youth. This time, Nose No Good just can't compete. The young seal's rival steals away the harem and makes sure Nose No Good won't be coming back. It'll take a few more years, a few more bites and a few more kilos before Nose No Good will be able to establish a harem on the island. In the meantime, he'll live the life of a peripheral male, trying to seduce females in the water before they're able to go up on shore and join his rival's harem. To attract females and ward off other males, knows no good will sing a love song. He constricts his air-filled throat, forcing the air out in a noise which can be heard for over 50 meters. much sought after female arrives. Knows no good makes a first approach trying to seduce the lovely lady. But she doesn't seem eager to respond to his advances. After all, he was beaten by his rival. It's possible that his genes aren't as good as those of the alpha male and that he'd be a genetically undesirable father. This kind of discrimination exasperates Knows No Good, who's determined to succeed with the female. Clearly, the young female is being uncooperative. Faced with such a lack of obedience, Knows No Good must get hold of the situation. Or more precisely, he must get hold of the skin of his lady love's neck. Knows no good knows he can only mate with her in shallow waters, unless he wants to drown her under his considerable weight. He conducts her to a bed of ribbon kelp and will periodically bring her to the surface to breathe.
the lovely female remains indifferent to his show of attention and is frightened by her companion's ardor. Faced with his rude treatment and his clumsiness, she rebels. And slices knows no good's muzzle open with her sharp teeth. This is how, during his first amorous adventure, the young grey seal became scarred for life. For 11 months, a baby grey seal will come into the world. Of course, he'll be born on the Faroe Island and be abandoned only three short weeks after his birth. As for his father, perhaps one day he'll be massive enough to conquer the reigning male on his island. Then Faroe Island will be dominated by a leader with a very unusual profile. A nose, no good. 